Melody Weintraub and I teach middle school art and I'm going to show you how to make the base of a Cherokee double wall basket. I ordered this kit from Dick Blick. It comes with the instructions and enough reed to make 40 baskets. This is a basket I made with natural vines, muscadine vines, and it's a nest and my students learn how to make the basket, but they transform the basket into a nest. This is a double wall Cherokee basket that I made as an example for students. This is the kind of basket that we're gonna be making. I haven't finished it off yet. I did add some muscadine vine here, and I intertwined some pine, needle, um, pine needles in the top of the basket. So you want to start with um, reeds, and you want to. I'm starting with 12, and these reeds are all the same length. I'm actually using ends that have been cut off, but these are called. These are the spokes of the basket, and so one of the first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of the spokes, six of the spokes and I'm gonna flatten them and lay them over in a cross on top, right in the center, hopefully I'll get them centered well, of the others. Then I'm going to take a reed that is called a weaver, and all of these have already been pre-soaked in water for at least 20 minutes so that they're pliable. And I'm going to take this reed and I'm gonna put it under the reeds that are under on this cross. I'm gonna let it extend a little bit. Then I'm gonna go over these reeds. Then I'm gonna go under the next and then over these, and you repeat it three times. This part of the basket making is called flashing. So this is a really important part because this, this is the base of your basket. So I've already gone over twice. And then I'm gonna go over one more time. I learned to make baskets in a workshop, but then, just like you're doing today, I went on the internet and I looked at some tutorials. So hopefully this will give you a new skill that you can bring to your students in the classroom. Right, so there's three. I've lashed it three times. I then, after I have lashed it, I wanna hold that together good with one finger, and I want to separate the spokes into groups of two, but this will become, these two will become one spoke. So I wanna kinda pull them apart, and I will say with this part, be more uh, evenly that you that you separate these the more consistent your basket will look so i'm just pulling them apart like on a clock keeping them together because i'm pulling them apart in groups of two so they're pairs going around You don't want the spokes to be any farther apart than about an inch um, and a half because of some of the weaving that you're going to be doing later on. 
Now I have an even number. I have an even number of spokes. That's going to be a problem. You will always have an even number when you start out. You can either add another read to make an odd number. You just would insert it in here. Or you can snip one of the spokes. I'm going to choose to snip one of the spokes. I'll snip this one. You need an odd number because you're going to be weaving in and out and in and out and in and out. And also, when you weave, you're going to go under one and over the next like this. You need to be able, on your next rotation, you'll need to be able to go over the one you went under before. So you can't do that if you have an even number. So see, you've got a little bit of math going on there. So I went under this one. Now once you start weaving, it's going to hold together better. I usually have to kind of spread these apart. So I went under this one. I'm going to go over this one. And then under this one. And over this one. Now I'm already starting to weave. I went over that one, so on this next one, I'm going to go under. And this is with the tail that you had left over from the lashing. So now I've come back around to where I started right here. And see, this is now going over the one that went before it went under this particular spoke, and now it goes over that spoke. It went over this spoke before, now it's going to go under. see this. I tell the students that you have to really pay attention when you're doing this when you first start out. It'll get where you can visit with one another while you're weaving, but not right at first. And you want to make sure that you get, that you make this bottom part strong. Still staying with the weave. So at this point, this might be all that you would get done in one 40 minute class period, but you need to be highly organized um, to get things going so they get this far with it. And we took little uh, post-its tabs and um, we would then get this far, and then we'd probably tuck this weaver in. The end of the weaver is here. So I'd probably tuck the weaver in to kind of lock it for the next class period. I would do like this. And then the students would take a sticky tab, like a little post-it, even smaller than this. And But you could just use a regular post-it and just close it up around there and write their names on it so that when they come back they can find their basket but that i wouldn't set two lofty goals i would say if you got this far on the first class period you were doing pretty good mm -hmm.